Based on experiences with Hackasat 1, most of us expected Hackasat 2 to be pretty challenging. Qualifiers, which took place back in June, did not disappoint. Hello, I'm Vito, and we're going to talk about the challenges Fiddlin' John Carson and Cotton Eye Geo. When you connect to the server for Fiddlin' John Carson, it gives you a position vector, a velocity vector, and the current time, and then prompts you for some orbit parameters. From some quick internet searches, I figured out that the challenge is asking you to convert the Cartesian position and velocity vectors into Keplerian orbital parameters. I haven't really done any orbital mechanics in over a decade, and that was all, you know, two-dimensional, so we're going to have to learn how to do this together. Cartesian coordinates tell you where you are and how you're moving in a space of right angles. The International Celestial Reference Frame, or ICRF from this challenge, differs from latitude and longitude in some very important ways. So a problem with latitude and longitude is that the distance in kilometers per degree of travel changes as you move around. For example, moving south, like I am right now, you get more meters per degree the closer you get to the equator. Similarly, the farther away I move from sea level, like whenever I climb these stairs up here, that also means there are more meters per degree of travel. Down here, you know, at sea level, it's not super significant. But it, when you're orbiting and moving really, really fast, really, really high, it's another matter entirely. ICRF coordinates are in a three-dimensional grid. One coordinate goes roughly north-south through the center of the Earth, and the others are at right angles to that, and also each other. They're keyed to a bunch of quasars and that kind of thing super far outside our galaxy, so that as we move through the solar system, and the solar system moves through the universe, the coordinates don't change too much. However, the six numbers, three position, three velocity, don't actually tell us very much about the orbit. We'd like to know what altitudes it ranges through, where do you have to point a dish or antenna to see it, and that kind of thing. To do that, it's useful to convert them into Keplerian orbital parameters, which describe the shape of the orbit, where it goes, and where the satellite is on it right now. That's the quick version. I found this website to be really useful to understand what all these different parameters mean. So how do you actually solve this challenge? Let's see how the team's single event upset did it. They started with the Orbital Pi Python module, which also produces really nice plots. I'm recreating these in a Jupyter notebook simply because it makes the plots easy to see and also export. Their code to solve Fiddlin' John Carson is pretty simple. They use an Orbital Pi function to turn an ICRF state vector, which is the position and velocity, into most of the Keplerian elements then they calculate the degrees for the true anomaly because orbital pi likes to work in radians and print that out too. Next, let's talk about the sequel to Fiddlin' John Carson, Cotton Eye Geo. Like any sequel, it starts where the previous one ends. The spacecraft is still in orbit, but now we have to provide a delta v or change in velocity vector and time to execute that change in velocity to put us into a brand new orbit. Getting from one orbit to another is done by changing your velocity at a specific time. Increasing your forward velocity at the highest point in your orbit increases your altitude at the lowest point. Decreasing your velocity at the lowest point in your orbit decreases your altitude at the highest point. Since we're in an elliptic orbit already, which means we vary through a wide range of altitudes, and the challenge wants us to get into a low eccentricity or more circular orbit, we have to burn at our highest point, which is also called the apocenter. The single event upset solution begins with their Fiddlin' John Carson solution. From there, they propagate the orbit until the satellite's at the apocenter. That's the highest point. This means simulating the orbit from the current true anomaly, or where the spacecraft is, until the true anomaly is at 180 degrees. This is a relatively cheap simulation. It's a few trigonometry and other math operations, without any time-stepping where errors can creep in. Once we're at our apocenter, we create a maneuver to change the altitude at our lowest point, or pericenter. We can calculate a first guess. The challenge wants us to set the semi-major axis to about, you know, approximately, 
42,164 kilometers with a basically circular eccentricity. We subtract 6,371 kilometers for the Earth's radius and tell Orbital to make a maneuver to set our pericenter altitude to 35,793 kilometers. That makes a bunch of scary looking warnings and the orbital source code kind of suggests that it's having trouble calculating our eccentricity vectors from that. Going a kilometer lower avoids the warnings, but we're still too high. Some more trial and error gets us to a pericenter altitude of 35,762 kilometers, which avoids the warnings and meets our eccentricity goals. Once we've taken our delta V vector and keyed it into the challenge, we get a flag back, and that's it. Thanks for joining me while solving Fiddlin' John Carson and Cotton Eye Geo.